Today is September 20th, and we're building a brand new class from scratch on IntelliJ. And we're building this shoe class. I've created a brand new project, and we've declared these four private variables. And I've already used IntelliJ's code generation capabilities to construct the getters, the setters, uh, two string and two constructors. The two constructors I've chosen are the zero argument or default constructor and the full featured constructor with everything here. So we're well on our way to having our little shoe class. Let's um, test out our shoe class by creating uh, a, another test code. So we'll call it the shoe tester. Uh, let's just put that in here. And we're going to use the PSVM shortcut with a tab after it to create the main method. And now we should be able to create a shoe. So, uh, oh, let's go back to our shoe class for one second and decide how we want to set up these variables in case there's no information yet. What do you think we should use for the owner and the brand? We could put nulls in here, which is actually what they already are, or we could put uh, something more descriptive. Uh, Mr. Alejandro, what would be your opinion, sir, of how to set the owner if we don't know the owner? No owner would be good or unknown uh, or none, something like that. Um, and for the brand, we can go unknown also. And for the size, what would be a good size to indicate it hasn't been initialized? Mr. Amrani? Yeah. Zero is an excellent choice, sir. And uh, this one, I don't think it really matters whether we set it to true or false, but we have to set it to something. So I'll just set it to false for now, uh, just because. Yes, sir. Would it be better to do zero or negative one? Uh, either one would be fine, I think, in this case. They're both invalid shoe sizes. Uh, negative one is good too, yeah. Okay, now, um, first thing I want to show you here is you see that I've uh, got this code. And I'm basically got two separate constructors. This is not a good idea. Who remembers from CSA a better strategy? Mr. Ben? Uh, calling this to use the Okay, so what we want to do is we want to use the this keyword to have the, this constructor pass control to this constructor. And so what we want to do here is we want to take these values and pass them as arguments instead. So we're going to go none here, then we're going to go unknown here, then we're going to go 0.0, .0 and false, like that. Um, and who remembers the shortcut to get to the end of the line? Is it control shift enter? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of all this. And this is a better way to go. And the reason you want to do it this way, and this is chaining the constructors, is that if you want to put more work into this constructor, you don't want to have to repeat it here. So just transferring the control makes it better because if you want to put debug statements or other stuff in here, this will automatically pick up the features. You won't have to repeat it. So this is just a better way to do it. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go back to the shoe tester. Let's create a shoe. Uh, what was that? The, the shortcut for system out print. S out, okay. And uh, like that, and let's just try this out and make it, see, make sure everything's working. And it looks like it's working fine. And we'll just do the other one. We'll test the other one out uh, with the full featured. Bob will be the owner. It'll be a Nike. And uh, size will be a nine and a half. And uh, we'll say that it's going to be a left shoe. So we'll say that's true. OK, and then I'll just print that shoe as well. OK, so it looks like everything is working. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some features that we did not learn about in uh, CSA. And the first one is I'm going to give them the ability to create another shoe from an existing shoe. So here you can see I have this shoe called T. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to go like this. I want to be able to go shoe W equals T. Now, if I do this right now, what kind of copy have I made here, Miss Mila? This is a shallow copy. 
all I have are two pointers that are pointing to the same shoe. That's not what I want. I want to create another shoe that's identical to the first shoe, uh, but basically have another copy of it. So what I want to do here is I want to go like this. I want to go shoe W equals new shoe. And what should I pass the constructor in order to make a copy? In other words, what should go inside here if I want to make a copy of T? Who can tell me? I could pass all this information again, right? But I don't want to do that, especially because it could change. So what should I pass instead? I want to pass T. So I want to make it like that. Okay, so what this is going to happen is it's going to take a shoe as an argument to a constructor and it's going to make another shoe using the information from the first shoe. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and where I have my other constructors written, I'm going to add a third constructor now. See if you can work with your partner to figure out what that constructor should look like. Mr. Franovic, sir, what do you think the header of my of my new um, new uh, constructor method should be? Public shoe. Public shoe. So far, so good, sir. And what should I put inside here? Oh, uh, shoe. Shoe. I got to give it a name. And uh, yes, miss. People always use other as the variable. Okay. And so now, what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the information from the other shoe into our shoe. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take all this stuff here and put it in here. Can someone think of a better way? Mr. F, sorry. So once again, instead of doing it like that, I want to go like this and I want to pass the information that is going to be copied into the constructor. See if you can figure out how to do that now. Okay, question. Could I have used this these instead, like get owner and get brand and get size and get lab? Could I have done that also? Yes, I could have done that. How come I didn't need to do that? Normally, when we access information from an object, we have to use the we have to use the getters and setters, but here I could access the variables directly. How odd. Mr. Ben? We're in the shoe class. These variables belong to us. We should be able to touch them. So now we're going to just go here and just use the shorter owner. If you did use the getters, that's perfectly okay. There are people that think that it's a superior way to code, and, and there are good reasons for that. It's slightly slower in execution time, but it does have some advantages if to use the getters. Okay, so basically, uh, we're, we're done here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our test code now. And now we're going to see if you can see that the error has gone away because we've created this constructor. And now I'm going to print both of these shoes. That again. So T and W are cloned now. They're exactly identical shoes, but they're deep copies. See that, right? Question, if I change the owner for T, will the owner for W change? No, that's the whole point. They're deep copies now. So you can see how valuable it is to have a copy constructor. So this constructor here is known as a copy constructor. Okay. That's a copy constructor. All right, next thing we want to be able to tell is if two shoes are the same shoe. Now, what does it mean for the shoes to be the same? You as the shoe class owner get to decide what it means. So normally when we compare the shoes inside here, inside the test code, let's say I have two shoes. I have a shoe S and a shoe T and I want to compare them. Are, are the, is the uh, coder going to compare them like this, S equals T? What does that mean, Mr. Scholson? That's right. It checks to see if they're shallow copies. But that's not what we typically want to know when we're comparing objects. So instead of using the double equals, 
what should we use, uh, uh, Mr. Mariak? Dot equals. Now, if I write the dot equals right now, we have not created a dot equals method for the shoe class. Will this code compile? Yes or no? Mr. Franovic, it will. You see, it just did. Question, where am I picking up the equals method from? I didn't write one. Who has not helped me yet? Mr. Uh, Adil, sir. Look, it's compiling. It's picking up an equals method. Where is it getting this equals method from? Object class. Very good, sir. So even though I have not declared myself to be inheriting from anyone, in Java, all classes inherit from object. So it's picking up the object classes method. What does the object classes equals method do? What does it compare? It has no information. Yes, sir. The memory addresses. So in this case, it's doing exactly the same as the double equals, which is what we don't want. So what we do want is to be able to compare the shoes based on our rules. We own the shoe class. We make up the rules to determine when two shoes are the same. Let's just decide as a class what should constitute two shoes being the same. What do you think? What do you, what's your idea, Mr. Franovic? Okay. 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 So you basically think that all the all the variables should be the same, and I think that's a good a definition as any. Yes, sir. We're checking for the same pair. Like, should we check these left? Or well, um, that's a method we could write where we could ignore the left right and to see if they make a pair, or maybe check one is left and one is right. But that's not what we're doing right now. We're now we're just trying to see if if they're two equivalent shoes. Uh, so what Mr. Fanovic said was fine. Uh, I'm going to change the definition just slightly and say we're not going to look at the owner. We're only going to look at these three things to determine if the two shoes are the same. We don't really care who the owner is. But what Mr. Fanovic said is not wrong. In a different application, that might be the right way to define equality. So what I want you to do now is come over here under the copy constructor and write for me an equals method. That only checks to make sure that these three things are the same for the two shoes. Mr. Basu, have you written your equals method, sir? Okay, sir, can you tell me what the header looks like? So, sir, when we write the equals method, we have to write it exactly. same signature as the equals method in the object class and anything else that might be going on. So what is the name of the equals method? Do you know? It's not is equals. It's called equals. And what should we have as an argument here, sir? Okay, so <clears throat> that might be your first guess, and that's a very uh, good guess. But in this case, it's not exactly right. And what I want to know, Mr. Joji, what do you think, sir? That's what I have, sir. I'm saying it's not right. Uh, Mr. Alejandro, what do you think, sir? Okay, so here is a case where we, it's better to write it as object other. And I want to know why should I use object here? I know it's going to be a shoe. Yes. Yeah, I don't want that. So why why should I use object instead of shoe? Uh, let's see here. Mr. Mulcahy, sir, any idea why I would want to use object instead of shoe? Okay, because I'm overriding the one that, that goes with the uh, object class. And so I want to make sure I get the arguments exactly. So here I'm going to go like this. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go shoe temp equals what? Yes, sir. No. 
Mr. Shulson? Uh, Oops, oh, sorry. Shoe other. And now I can write my if statement. Or even better, I can just do a single return statement. And I can compare these three things. So you write that return statement now, comparing these three things between this temp shoe and the current shoe. We want it to return true if these three things match, the brand, the size, and the, and the, the foot it is. We don't care about the owner. That's just a that's just an arbitrary rule I've set up here. Don't think that Mr. Franovic's idea of comparing all four things were were wrong. That could be just as good a definition of the same shoe. Okay, uh, Miss Olivia, can you give me one piece? Like uh, like that. So what is what data type is brand, Miss Olivia? So how do we compare strings? So this equal, sir, is being called on a string. It's calling the string equals. It's not calling our equals. That's a good question, though. Uh, so okay, we've got the brands matching. Now what else? What else did I say has to match? Miss Mila. And so basically we want to return true if only all three properties match. Notice I'm using the dot equals to compare the strings, but I'm using the double equals to compare the numbers and the Boolean. Yes, miss? Say again? That's what I've just arbitrarily decided, miss. So that's basically our equals method. Are we good? Okay, and the last thing that we're going to add today to our shoe class is going to be a hash code. Now, this hash code takes a little bit of explaining. The hash code is a single number that tries to uniquely identify the shoe. Now, let me explain something to you. How many different kinds of shoes could we create with these four variables? Look at these variables. How many kinds of shoes? How many shoes could we make in theory? How many? An infinite number of shoes. We agree, right? We could create an infinite number of shoes. Now, this hash code that we're returning is a single 32-bit integer. You see that, right? Is it possible for each shoe to have its own unique hash code? Can you map an infinite number of shoes to a finite number of integers. No, you're gonna run out of integers. Makes sense, right? So this is not a perfect situation, but we'll just do the best that we can and try to make each shoe have its own, so quote unquote, unique number. And the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that the string class already has a hash code built in. Let's look at that for a second. So if I go over to the Oracle string library, here we go. Somewhere down here, you'll see that there is a hash code function. And what it does, this thing returns a hash code for a string. It tries to take the string and has some fancy mathematical formula for turning it into a number. This is useful for a lot of different things. We're going to learn about hashing further down the road. For now, you're just going to have to take my word for it. We're just going to try to use the, the, some combination of the information that we have here to generate a unique hash code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the owner hash code uh, sorry, let me just, uh, let's do this. Let's take the, the brand hash code. Uh, so this dot brand, uh, dot hash code. 
this is the one that's built into the well, the C has to be capitalized here, by the way. Sorry about that. Uh, hash code uh, plus, uh, let's add in the, uh, the, we'll take the size and we'll add that in. And also we'll add in the, uh, 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 you know, we'll just leave it like this for now. See if that works. Okay, we'll, we'll get to the hash code thing another day. Uh, we're just going to create some number that's going to try to uniquely identify the shoe. All right? So that is basically the basis of what you need for a class. So let's just go over it again. We have the properties. We have the getters. We have the setters. We have a two string. We have the regular constructors. We have a copy constructor. We have a equals method and we have a hash code method. I promise to explain the hash code method at a at a more granular level a few months from now when we're discussing hashing. Okay, but this is basically what it takes to make a good class. I'm going to leave this here. We're going to take a five minute break when we get into the lab next. And then I want you to work on two things. I want you to build a similar class here for building that's described in your textbook. Let me show you that. So if you go over to your textbook here, there is a building class that you have to build and test out. Now, normally I stand behind your left shoulder, you demo the lab to me, it's working and it's over. Today though, I need you to take not only your output, but also a copy of your code and submit it on the Google Classroom because I'm gonna ask Mr. Milland over the next few days to go through your code and make sure that you are writing good code. This is one of the rare instances where you're gonna get someone to review your code and make sure it looks pretty and it's doing all the right things architecturally, okay? This lab is designed to be a 30 minute lab. That will give you another 20 minutes of free time to finish any old labs that you might have kicking around. 